Hi, welcome back. Let's look at the lab called Class Attributes. This page called Python Namespaces tells us something very important and we'll see exactly what it is. You already know if you have an unqualified identifier, what that means is that an X is unqualified. Well, a qualified identifier looks like this at some object dot X. But we know that the unqualified identifier, if we have it on the left side of the equal sign, we are doing an assignment. And it is going to make that X right there in the namespace where it's at, unless it's been declared global. When you have an X unqualified, for reference, like printX, then it's going to look in the local namespace. Here's one way to write it, because you really do have access to the identifiers in that local namespace, but those identifiers as string through this magic dictionary that's inside each and every object. Okay, so we look in that local namespace, and if it's not there, we look in any enclosing namespace. If it's not there, then we look at the global level, and if it's not there, then we look in the built-ins. Now, we know that. We've had that in our mind for a while. But we have to look at the whole situation again when we have a qualified identifier, an object X. And the object can be a package, a module, a class, or the instantiation of a class, which is object in the object-oriented programming sense. When you do an assignment, that value gets assigned to the X inside that object, period. But when you do object.x for reference, then a very huge, generous thing goes on. Well, first of all, it looks to report that x that is in the object. If it is not there, it'll go into the class definition where the x was instantiated. It's instantiating class. If there is an x at that class level, that's what it'll find. If not, it'll go up that class's hierarchy if it's there. So that's another really generous scheme for referencing. We'll look at some code. That'll help a lot. We'll take a look at this soccer team code. We did this code non-object oriented when we were studying dynamic coding. Here we'll do it object oriented and we'll see how beautiful object oriented code is. To be clear about what we're doing, here's our class diagram. We will have a team class and it is a container for the players. The player will be a virtual class, meaning that no player should be instantiated directly, but any of these players can be instantiated and they inherit from that player. So what all these players have in common, their common behaviors, will be defined in the player. Once again, we're going to read the bees data and the bees is the team that we are going to stick into our program. Let's look at our main. We allow our caller to give us a command line argument, and that'll be the name of our data file. If our user doesn't do that, then this is our default data file back in lab 290, the bees data file. It looks like this. We're going to use that data file, and that's what goes into our instantiator of our team. Let's go look at our team's instantiator. The data file comes in. We're going to keep a list of players. This is a container. Here's our list of players. It starts empty. We open that data file as our data object, and then we're looking at each line in the file. The line will strip it. If there's nothing left, or if the first character after a strip is a pound sign, it's not a useful line. Well, we don't have that in our data file. However, we could have. We could do a lot of commenting. And we skip it and we go on and grab the next line. If the line ends with a colon, forwards, 
middle fielders, defenders, and goalies all have colons. Well, those are our positions. So if it ends with a colon, then we're going to say our position is that line. So it is forwards colon. And then we go and get the next line. If neither of these are true, then we have the line that belongs to a player. If the position that was last set here is forwards colon, then we're going to instantiate a forward. Otherwise, maybe it's the midfielder was the last position line we saw, and then we do a midfielder. Defenders and goalies. If a line comes in, and the soccer position is not one of these that we name, then we're clueless, and I'm going to raise a value error. So this gets raised to my collar. And then what I do after I make each player is I append it to my players list. Okay, let's go instantiate a forward. Here's my forward class. It has no methods in it, certainly not a magic initializer. Therefore, we go up to the player class, and here is where we take in that line that was read from the data file. This is how I can test the class. See what it is. The magic class inside each self is the instantiating class. If it is player, that's no good. We don't want that. Our players have to be professionals and know what they're doing. We'll raise a type error. Player class cannot be directly instantiated. And that tells our caller what they need to do. Otherwise, we're good. And we're going to store the name and the number. This happens whatever type of player we have. They all run through the same initializer. And then we're done with this line instantiating the team. All those data are neatly kept in that team object. Now we're going to ask our team to cheer. We go back up to our team and we look for a cheer. Here it is. The cheer is going to be the new line join of each player's cheer. So for each player we're going to call his personal cheer for each player in the sorted self players and we're going to sort on the player's number. Okay, each player has a number back up there. Each player is going to get his cheer call. Look at in the forward class for the cheer method. There isn't one. Therefore, we go into the cheer method of the player. And the cheer method of the player says self name, self number, and self encouragement. But there's no encouragement in the self. Here's where we instantiated it. No encouragement. Now the rule is, if it isn't in the object and we're referencing, and we are just referencing, then go into the instantiating class and look for it at the class level. And that's why we say go for the goal. It found it right there. Well, that's lovely because now all the players who are forwards share that same string. The last thing we try to do here is we're going to make a player, and his shirt number is zero, and his name is Can't Happen. Let's go back up to that instantiator. There's that line that came in, but since the instantiation step came straight to the player, the class stored in the self that we have had nothing to do with so far, knows that it's a player, and we raise that type error. The error is very instructive in that it gives me the spot in my code where I made a bad call. Okay, that's that big concept. You have a little exercise to try. I hope you find it fun. I'll see you when you're done.